The Federal Judicial Service Commission has shortlisted 22 justices of the Court of Appeal for elevation to the country's Supreme Court's bench. Among the judicial officers uh, that the legal body in the list, it has forwarded to the National Judicial Council uh, to be promoted to the Apex Court include Justice uh, Haruna Samani, who led the panel that confirmed or framed the election of President Bola Tinubu. Specifically, whereas six justices were nominated from the North Central region, the Southwest and South South regions got two nominees each. Likewise, while six justices were okayed from the Southeast, the Northeast got two nominees in the list that was forwarded to the NJC on Thursday. The development came barely four days after President Tinbu pleaded for qualified, experienced, and diligent private legal practitioners to be appointed to both the Appeal Court and the, the Court of Appeal, rather, and the Supreme Court. Well, to discuss this development, we're joined by Mandi Upani. He is a legal practitioner. Um, Barsa, thank you very much for your time. It's good to see you again. Uh, what criteria you know, or qualifications uh, does the Federal Judicial Service Commission typically, typically consider uh, when shortlisting justices from the Court of Appeal for elevation to the highest court, which is the Supreme Court? The issue of uh, world competence, uh, meritocracy, and the issue of the the region uh, where we have uh, the issue, uh, vacancy. I think uh, East, and uh, I think another particular region has a large number of vacancies in the Supreme Court, and they need to fill it. If you look at the Supreme Court as presently uh, constituted. Uh, there is no Eastern uh, justice in the Supreme Court presently. So that will be taken into consideration in the number of persons that will be elevated to the Supreme Court from that region. So competent, merit, capacity, uh, intellectual prowess, what you have produced over the years in terms of quality judgment and all that, you know, is what must have accounted. Uh, for recommendation to the Supreme Court. The only regret is that I didn't see uh, the the legal practitioners, you know, as the president himself was recommending that that should be taken into consideration. There is no single uh, legal practitioner in that list. They are all justices of the Court of Appeal that have been actually recommended for elevation to the Supreme Court. Interesting. Uh, uh, uh... Uh, could the inclusion of justices, uh, Justice Haruna Samani, who we just said is part of on that list, uh, he presided over the uh, panel uh, that uh, affirmed President Bolatini was election at the PEPC. Uh, could his inclusion potentially, uh, Monday, but I know you don't like getting into political waters, but uh, <laughs> can it potentially raise concerns about the impartiality of bias, you know, in the decision making process regarding judicial appointments, particularly to the Apex Court? Yeah, if you, if, you, if you know what has been done, it's just a nomination. Uh, the confirmation of who will eventually emerge as the Supreme Court Justice lies clearly in the hands of the NJC. Uh, so what the Federal uh, uh, Judicial Service Commission does is only to recommend uh, or nominate, and then NJC will now recommend and pass it over to the president who eventually uh, uh, you know, does the remaining uh, aspect of ensuring that the three arms of government are, are involved in the appointment of these justices, you know. Now, will I, be, will I be in a position to actually judge whether Samani is recommended because he did a good job, you know, uh, for the present uh, president and all that, you know, that clearly will be very speculative. Uh, the question that will be was, is he qualified? Uh, has he, how long has he been in the judiciary? Uh, even if he has been in the judiciary, especially the Court of Appeal, for a very long time, and over time also has probably grown in terms of uh, in experience and age, you know, at the, at the Court of Appeal, that again must have accounted for his recommendation at this point that he, he presided over the case that, even, uh, that gave uh, victory uh, to the present president uh, is just circumstantial. You know, it may not necessarily be that. He's been promoted because uh, he was the one that gave that favorable judgment, maybe because he's qualified. He has been in the bench for a very long time. He has capacity, he has competence, 
and uh, on merit, it's also merit based, and that may be the reason why it's a recommend. But what if anyone says at this point, may be a conjecture on the, the body that actually recommended him, we give reason why they, you know, and if he has satisfied the criteria that has been laid out, you know, that may be the reason why he's recommended to the Supreme Court. Okay, so in your opinion, Amandi Bani, does this promotion of justices of the Court of Appeal to Nigeria Supreme Court, does it align uh, uh, with the Nigerian legal framework, and in particular the procedures outlined by the NJC? Yes, that, that, that is the point. You know, uh, usually uh, from most of the promotion over time has been from the Court of Appeal to Supreme Court. And those who are elevated to the Court of Appeal are from the lower court, that is the high court or federal high court to the Court of Appeal. Uh, but some people have been adv advocating that we may as well depart from this procedure if we really want to get uh, the kind of quality uh, justices at the at the apex court we had had over time before now. You remember that there was a particular justice that was uh, uh, made the CJN of the Federation right from uh, he was taken from the academy, he was taken from the university and promoted to the Supreme Court. Justice Okuta, I understand, was a, a chief judge of a state, a former old Imo, uh, the old Imo, and he was elevated from right from that, that particular lower bench to the Supreme Court. And he, of course, you and I know, if you read the judgment of Okuta, he was one of the best. Justice in Namani, and I think Justice in Namani also was, uh, uh, was also, uh, his, uh, his uh, elevation was, was something else also, either from the academia or from, the, from legal practice. And I also know that Justice uh, that this Achike, Achike, Professor Achike also was elevated from uh, from the academia uh, into the Supreme Court, and they turned out to be uh, the best, you know, of the, one of the best. So that's why the president was advocating, gentlemen, can we also look at legal practitioners who have done well, so well in, and in the legal practice and, and, and can contribute, uh, you know, and then from those even from the academia, you know, bring some level of intellectual bent in the Supreme Court, you know, because that is a policy uh, court that, that, that requires a lot of uh, mix of, of intellectual prowess and knowledge and all that. That has been the advocacy, but the people who have always uh, recommended have always stuck to the old way of doing things of recommending people from the Court of Appeal to Supreme Court. Uh, we've not, we are not complaining. We're only saying that variety is spicy, adds some level of spice uh, to life. Let's try some legal practitioner and let there be a mix and see what can come out of that. You know, it, it is something we are recommending, but it's not something that one can uh, probably go to court and enforce, you know, because those who are the court of appeal are expecting to move over to the Supreme Court because mm. you put many years uh, on the very time. You, you are, uh, expectation is for you to be elevated to the Supreme Court. So they may not want at, at this point in time for any person to displace them who have actually cut out a career in the bench and the expectation is to be at the Supreme Court and they probably, they, they may not like lawyers, you know, from the from the bar, and then they you not catapult them to the Supreme Court. I think that may be the reason why some of uh, some of those suggestions are not being taken uh, into account in this uh, recent appointment. Interesting. Uh, uh, um, you know, we we know that the talk has been of the number of justices on the uh, uh, Supreme Court's bench not being adequate, the numbers being depleted over the years. Uh, but generally, uh, what implications might the elevation of these twenty-two justices? Uh, honorable justices to the Supreme Court have on Nigeria's judicial landscape, you know, especially yeah. in terms of like maintaining balance, diversity, the quality of jurisprudence at the very highest level of the country's judiciary. Mm. I, I don't think that the number of uh, justices recommended will actually be appointed at the same time because there is a minimum requirement uh, provided for by the Constitution. I think the minimum uh, or the maximum rather is 21. Uh, presently, we have 10. So what is required to bring it to that particular uh, uh, con uh, constitutional requirement will be, uh, will be 11. 11 plus 10 uh, gives you 21 justices. So that's why you see the list, that those who are on priority list and those who are on reserve. What it means that those who are on priority list, if anything happens to them, there is any care leg in their nomination, then those who are on reserve will actually take over. Uh, from them, you know, so I think that at the NJC now, all, all that consideration comes in. Even those who are on reserve may likely be the one that will be taken before those ones who are on priority list, you know, but what will be taken 
I am sure we will not in any way be all the, all the entire justice that have been recommended. What we will require uh, is 21 a maximum as prescribed by the Constitution. But I know that there is an advocacy, you know, from very various quarters that we should increase the number of justices in the Supreme Court, apart from the constitutional requirement, which should amend the Constitution mm. to allow up to 50 justices, up to 50 justices, if we really want to have quicker dispensation of justice at that level, because so many cases go to Supreme Court. But I know recently that somebody like us, Fabio, who happens to be the senior president, made a suggestion that not every case from the local village should end up at the Supreme Court. There are some cases that should end up at Court of Appeal. Why some, as I agreed, we go to Supreme Court? We should not be allowing all manner of cases from the lowest court, you know, to actually get to the bus stop of Supreme Court because that has clustered that environment and has made it very difficult for us to have quicker dispensation. So there are suggestions and people are looking into it. So I think that the legislature should be able to enact a law, amend the constitution, and really do, do something that can actually transform our legal system and our administration of justice generally, especially on quicker dispensation of justice. Everyone is saying it, including the, the president himself. So they must make it a duty to ensure that people can come to court with level of confidence and have their issues resolved within the shortest possible time in order to allow investors to have confidence in our system and come in and invest. That is my, my, my suggestion. Right, Mandy Bani, uh, Nigerian lawyer, legal practitioner, thank you very much for your time. It's been an interesting conversation with you. Thank you for having me. Good night. Night. Night.